Good morning again, everybody. It's time for Chapter 8, What Happened After Dinner, of C.S. Lewis's book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I hope you're, I hope you're enjoying this book. If you are, you can subscribe to this channel, and then your teacher doesn't have to keep sending you individual um, links to these videos. And if you'd like to, you can pass these on to your friends. However, they can't see them on their own or search for them. I've made it unlisted so for extra security. This is just kind of between us, you might say. Anyway, Chapter 8, What Happened After Dinner of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And now, said Lucy, do please tell us what happened to Mr. Tumnus. Ah, that's bad, said Mr. Beaver, shaking his head. It's a very, very bad business. There's no doubt he was taken off by the police. I got that from a bird who saw it done. But where has he been taken to, said Lucy. Well, they were heading northward when they were last seen, and we all know what that means. No, we don't, said Susan. Mr. Beaver shook his head in a very gloomy fashion. I'm afraid it means they were taking him to her house. But what'll they do to him, Mr. Beaver? gasped Lucy. Well, said Mr. Beaver, you can't exactly say for sure. But there's not many taken in there that ever comes out again. Statues. All full of statues, they say it is, in the courtyard and up the stairs and in the hall. People she's turned and he paused and shuddered. <sighs> turned into stone. But, Mr. Beaver, said Lucy, can't we? I mean, we must do something to save him. It's too dreadful, and it's all on my account. I don't doubt you'd save him if you could, dearie, said Mrs. Beaver, but you've no chance of getting into that house against her will and never coming out alive again. Couldn't we have some stratagem, said Peter? I mean, couldn't we dress up as something, or pretend to be, or peddlers or something, or watch till she had gone out, or hang it all? There must be some way. This fawn saved my sister at his own risk, Mr. Beaver, we can't just leave him to be, or to be, to have that done to him. Now, stratagem means a kind of strategy. In other words, a way of thinking about how to do what they want to do. A plan, you might say. It's no good, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver. No good you're trying, of all people. But now that Aslan is on the move, hmm. Oh yes, tell us about Aslan, said several voices at once. For once again, that strange feeling, like the first signs of spring, like good news, had come over them. Who is Aslan? said Susan. Aslan? said Mr. Beaver. Why, don't you know? He's the king. He's the real king. He's the lord of the whole wood. But not often here, you understand. Never in my time, in my father's time. But the word has reached us that he has come back. He is in Narnia at this very moment. He'll settle the white queen all right. It is he, not you, that will save Mr. Tumnus. She won't turn him into stone, too, said Miss Edmund. Ha! Lord love you, son of Adam. What a simple thing to say, answered Mr. Beaver, with a great laugh. Turn him into stone? Ha! If she can stand on her two feet and look him in the face, it'll be the most she can do, and more than I expect of her. No, no, he'll put all to rights, as it is, as it says in an old rhyme in these parts. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bares his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. You'll understand when you see him. But shall we see him? said Susan. Why, daughter of Eve, that's what I brought you here for. I'm to lead you where you shall meet him, said Mr. Beaver. Is, is he a man? asked Lucy. Aslan? A man? said Mr. Beaver sternly. Certainly not. I tell you he is the king of the wood, and the son of the great emperor beyond the sea. Don't you know who the king of who is the king of beasts? Aslan is a lion. The lion. The great lion. Oh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. Is he is he quite safe? I shall felt rather nervous about meeting a lion. That you will, dearie, and make no mistake, said Mrs. Beaver. If there's anyone who can appear before Aslan with their, their knees knocking, they're either braver than most or just plain silly. Then he isn't safe, said Lucy. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Hmm. Don't you hear what Mrs. Beaver tells you? Who said anything about safe? 
Of course he's not safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. I'm longing to meet him, said Peter, even if I do feel frightened when he comes to the point. That's right, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver, bringing his paw down on the table with a crash. They have made all the cups and saucers rattle. And so you shall. Word has been sent that you are to meet him tomorrow, if you can, at the stone table. Where's that? I'll show you, said Mrs. Beaver. It's down the river, a good stuff from here. I'll take you to it. Meanwhile, about what Mr. Tumnus, the quickest way you can help him is by going to meet Aslan, said Mrs. Beaver, or Mr. Beaver. Once he's with us, then we can begin doing things. Not that we don't need you too, for that's another of the old rhymes. When Adam's flesh and Adam's bones sits a care pair of L in the throne, the evil time will be over and done. So things must be drawing near their end now he's come and you come. We've heard of Aslan coming into these parts before, long ago. Nobody can say when. But there's never been any of your race here before. That's what I don't understand, Mr. Beaver, said Peter. I mean, isn't the witch herself human? Well, she'd like us to believe it, said Mr. Beaver, and it's on that she bases her claim to be queen. But she's no daughter of Eve. She comes of your father, Adam's, here Mr. Bow, Mr. Beaver bowed, your father Adam's first wife. Her they called Lilith, and she was one of the jinn. That's what she comes from on one side, and on the other comes from the giants. No, there isn't a drop of real human blood in the witch. That's why she's bad all through, Mr. Beaver, said Mrs. Beaver. True enough, Mrs. Beaver, replied he. There may be two views about humans, mean, no, meaning no offense to the present company. But there's no two views about things that look like humans and aren't. I've known good dwarves, said Mrs. Beaver, and so have I, now you come to speak of it, said her husband, but few, precious few, and they are the ones least like men. But in general, take my advice, when you meet anything that's going to be human and isn't yet, or used to be human once and isn't now, or ought to be human and isn't, you keep your eyes on it and feel for your hatchet. And that's why the witch is always on the lookout for any humans in Narnia. She's been watching for you this many year, and she, if she knew there were four of you, you'd be, she'd be more dangerous still. What's that to do with it, said Peter? Because of another prophecy, said Mr. Beaver. Down at Caraparvel, that's the castle on the seacoast down at the mouth of this river, which ought to be the capital of the whole country, if it was as it should be. Down at Caraparvel, there are four thrones. And it's a saying in Narnia, time out of mind, that when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit in those four thrones, then it will be the end not only of the white witch's reign, but of her life. And that is why we had to be so cautious as we came brought you along. For if she knew about you four, your lives wouldn't be worth a shake of my whiskers. All the children had been attending so hard in what Mr. Beaver was telling them that they noticed nothing else for a long time. Then, during the moment of silence what followed his, that followed his last remark, Lucy suddenly said, I say, where's Edmund? There was a dreadful pause. And then everyone began asking, Who saw him last? How long has he been missing? Is he outside? Then all rushed to the door and looked out. The snow was falling thickly and steadily. The green ice of pool had vanished under a thick white blanket, and from where the little house stood in the center of the dam you could hardly see either bank. Out they went, plunging well over their ankles into the soft new snow, and went round the house in every direction. Edmund, they call Edmund, till they were hoarse. But the silently falling snow seemed to muffle their voices, and there was not even an echo in answer. How perfectly dreadful, said Susan, as they, as they last came back in despair. How I wish we'd never come. What are we on earth to do, Mr. Beaver, said Peter. Do, said Mr. Beaver, who was already putting on his snow boots. Do? We must be off at once. We have a moment to spare now. We better divide into four search parties, said Peter, and all go in different directions. Whoever finds him must come back here at once and... Search parties, son of Adam, said Mr. Beaver. For what? Why, to look for Edmund, of course. There's no look for, point in looking for him, said Mr. Beaver. By whatever do you mean, said Susan... He can't be far away yet. We've got to find him. 
What do you mean when you say there's no use looking for him? There is reason there's no use looking, said Mr. Beaver, is that we already know where he's gone. Everyone stared in amazement. Don't you understand, said Mr. Beaver? He's gone to her, to the White Witch. He has betrayed us all. Oh, surely, oh, really, said Susan. You can't, he can't have done that. You can't mean that. Can't he, said Mr. Beaver, looking hard at the three children, and everything they wanted to say died on their lips, for each felt suddenly quite certain inside that this is exactly what Edmund had done. But will he know the way, said Peter? Has he been in this country before, asked, her, asked Mr. Beaver? Has he ever been here alone? Yes, said Lucy, almost in a whisper. I'm afraid he has. And did he tell you what he'd done or what he'd, who he'd met? Well, no, he didn't, said Lucy. Then mark my words. He has already met the White Witch and joined her side and been told where she lives. I didn't like to mention it before, he being your brother and all, but the moment I set eyes on that brother of yours, I said to myself, he's treacherous. He had the look of one who had been with the witch and has eaten her food. You can always tell them if you've lived long in Narnia, something about in their eyes. All the same, said Peter in a rather choking set of voice, we still have to go and look for him. He's our brother, after all, even if he is a rather little beast. And he is only a child. Go to the witch's house, said Mr. Beaver. Don't you see that the only chance of saving either him or yourselves is to keep away from her? How do you mean, said Lucy? Why, all she wants is to get all four of you. She's thinking all the time of those four thrones at Care Paravel. Once you are all four inside her house, her job would be done, and there'd be four new statues in her collection before you had time to speak. But she'll keep him alive as long as he's the only one she's got, because she'll want to use him as a decoy, as bait, to catch the rest of you. Oh, can no one help us? wailed Lucy. Aslan, said Mr. Beaver. Now we must go on and meet him. There's our only chance now. It seems to me, my dear, said Mrs. Beaver, that it is very important to know just when he slipped away. How much he can tell her depends on how much he heard. For instance, had we started of talking to Aslan before he left? If not, then we may do very well, for she won't know that Aslan has come to Narnia, or that we are meeting him and will be quite off her guard as far as that is concerned. I don't remember his being here when we were talking about Aslan, began Peter. But Lucy interrupted him. Oh, yes, he was, she said miserably. Don't you remember? It was he who asked whether the witch couldn't turn Aslan into stone as well. So he did by Job. Just the sort of thing he would say, too, said Peter. Worse and worse, said Mr. Beaver, and the next thing is this. Was he still here when I told you that the place for meeting Aslan was a stone table? And of course, no one knew the answer to this question. Because if he was, continued Mr. Beaver, then she'll simply sledge down in that direction and get between us and the stone table and catch us on our way down. And in fact, we shall be cut off from Aslan. But that isn't what she'll do first, said Mrs. Beaver, not if I know her. The moment that Edmund tells her that we're all here, she'll set out to catch us this very night. And if, she's been, if he's been gone half an hour, she'll be here in about 20 minutes. You're right, Mrs. Beaver, said her husband. We must all get away from here. There's not a moment to lose. And that's the end of Chapter 8 of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, entitled What Happened After Dinner. Chapter 9 is next in The Witch's House. So have a good afternoon. Make sure you continue to read on your own. And to do what you need to do and to be responsive to your parents. Take care, and we'll talk to you again next time.